You may remember a few days ago, I had a pro-grade digital card that bit the dust while their tech support got back to me, got me an RMA number, and I sent it off. And now I'm sending it off so that they can send me a replacement. I hope it doesn't take very long. Meow meow, why are you under my truck? Meow meow, what are you doing? What are you doing, where are you going? Now I'm headed to Gilbert's house so that I can pick up some equipment and then I'm gonna show my little cousin Wyatt how to use some of it so that he can help us on the wedding day. Teaching Wyatt how to film slow-mo video for the slow-mo booth at the reception went really well. Um, I think he'll be a, a knack at it. And Gilbert let me borrow something really cool. So when we get back to the house, I'll show you. This is the 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook that belongs to CMac. It's my work computer. I've been using it for the last two weeks, two weeks. And it's been great. I've edited a couple of these vlogs on here to test uh, its performance. I've also done a number of CMAC projects on it. It's great. And I'm very, very happy with how smooth it is. Now, Gilbert just let me set up his 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro. It is totally specced out with 64 gigs of RAM and an eight terabyte SSD. If you can figure this computer on apple.com, it's upwards of $6,000. I gotta take really good care of it. But I wanted to compare a few things and I did one comparison already tonight. And that was, how do these two computers handle exporting H.265? Does it export faster on the 6,016 inch M1 Max computer? Or does the 14 inch M1 Pro hold up? Well, here's the thing about H.265 or high efficiency video codec, which I think is a dumb name because there can be future codecs that are also higher in efficiency. So I call this one the high efficiency one when there's gonna be better ones in the future. So more and more people are filming in 4K and even HDR formats and trying to cram a lot of video into small packages where H.265 works great. And a lot of these devices, including the camera I'm recording with right now, can record in H.265, take those files, compress them, make them, put them on SD cards or CF Express cards or CFast cards and, and make a nice looking file. But it takes a lot of processing power to make H.265 files. And cameras have a dedicated chip for it. And with these M1 Macs, filled with Apple Silicon, which is very similar to the chips inside of the iPhone and the iPad. And one would expect creating these files that require a lot of processing power to go well on a computer with a similar chip. Creating H.264 files don't utilize the GPU, which this computer has twice as much power than this computer. It's happening on the CPU. And between these two M1, Pro and Max computers, H.265 encoding is the same. It took the same amount of time to export the same video from Final Cut Pro as an H.265 file on these two computers. So this computer that was like $2,500 did just as well 
as this $6,000 computer. Now where the M1 Max comes in really clutch is ProRes processing. So this M1 Pro computer has one ProRes accelerator in it, and that's really just accelerating decoding. This computer has two ProRes accelerators, one for decoding and one for encoding. Now, it's already late. I feel like I've been all over the state today. I did not have time to really compare the speeds of ProRes encoding. I want to do that tomorrow. So I'll follow up with that. But in terms of H.265 file creation, there's not a huge difference between these two computers. Heck, there's not even a huge difference between these two computers and this 2018 iPad Pro. I can create an H.265 file in LumaFusion or iMovie almost as efficiently as these two MacBooks. It's quite strange how level across the playing field these computers are at creating H.265 files. Now these files are great for storing because they're smaller and they're great for, for sharing because they're really efficient and most mobile devices can already decode them very easily. But for delivering in a situation where it needs to be a very high quality file, I think ProRes is still the best option for that. In which case, I believe if you're encoding, the M1 Max really is going to be the computer that you're going to wanna to pick up. If you're doing a lot of big files in ProRes that you want taken care of. But if you're just making videos for YouTube and you wanna archive your H.265 file, I think the M1 Pro is holding its own against the M1 Max. Anyway, that's it. Just one preliminary test, trying to export an H.265 compressed file from Final Cut. These two computers performed exactly the same. I'm not totally surprised because these CPUs aren't hugely different from the M1 to the M1 Pro to the M1 Max. Basic single core process performance is pretty much the same across the board. And you see that when encoding these files. Anyway, that's it for me today. Hit subscribe if you like this video. I'm gonna do some more tests comparing these two computers over the next couple of days, and I will see you tomorrow. Peace.